everyone welcome back to josh impact insights your weekly talk show about causes and effects our guest today is mr dpk babu founder of ashray akriti a hyderabad based ngo working for disabled people with a focus on the hearing impaired he started the organization 25 years ago with a mission to empower people with disabilities through quality education healthcare and sustainable livelihoods he also conceptualized first of its kind mobile hearing clinics in the country which has impacted more than 100000 people over the past 6 years mr babu is a believer in inclusive society and his innovative methods of educating have resulted in mainstreaming a large number of hearing impaired children into regular schools so let's hear more from him about the impact they are creating in the community hello sir and welcome to josh impact insights hello tarishi uh, good morning and thank you very much uh, for having me here let's start with a small introduction about ashray akriti and the activities undertaken by it i am associated uh, with an organization called ashray akriti which is based in uh, hyderabad it's a non profit uh, non religious recognized organization uh, as a society and uh, we work in the area of education health and skill development we are an organization which works for persons with disabilities and a special focus on hearing impairment we do uh, an exemplary work in uh, uh, healthcare especially on people uh, who are hearing disability uh, people who have various uh, issues with the ear uh, it could be perforation it could someone is needing of a cochlear implant surgery a gift of hearing uh, we also work on skill development which is called uh, multimedia and animation training facility for uh, people with hearing impairment we run residential facilities for children with hearing impairment we run schools for uh, children with hearing impairment we run inclusive schools we partner with government schools and we run early intervention centers auditory uh, verbal therapy training center and uh, we conduct medical camps on a day to day basis uh, with the three mobile vans that we have how do you normally get the funding for your projects oh, yeah. we uh, have various uh, ways to raise funds for our, for the projects the boon is of course a corporate social responsibility and uh, our projects are being funded by trust corporates individuals and also government and uh, we do not depend on uh, it's not like uh, 80 20 formula we have funding from all uh, different kinds of donors under the new regulations you need to re-register for atg fcra csr etc what kind of impact do you think it will bring on the ngo in fact um, uh, the positive side of it is um, it can bring in lot of uh, transparency and the more and more, and it can improve the credibility also because uh, when fcra was uh, uh, there have been lot of uh, uh, myths about, about fcra when everybody has to go for re registration some of them have been uh, blocked so that's a good reason some of the ones who are not doing very good work so they may have lost it but similarly this time also the good ones will always continue to you know uh, get the renewal i suppose as long as they do and there is ample funding uh, with the csr uh, being available for organizations like us so uh, good transparency and um, uh, credibility can definitely uh, fetch you the required funds and then carry out your social mission what kind of information is required from you by companies for funding under csr once a corporate wants to donate to or support your organization it is mandatory that you have your atg 12 year csr1 darpan registration and then uh, some some organization take a deep dive into your balance sheet and they look at your admin cost they also look at your uh, various um, assets and then try to understand how transparent you are and how it's, how is your um, bookkeeping and uh, uh what are your financial systems do you have an internal auditor do you have a statutory auditor uh is your organization taking care of your employees are you pf esi registered at the i mean are you compliant enough with the rules with the uh, laws of the country all these things matter a lot the more and more compliant uh, because bigger brands uh, maybe multinational companies 
if they would want to tie up with you you need to ensure that you also uh, reciprocate properly and ensure that their brand is not spoiled you have been making a great impact in the community how do you generally track it and provide it to companies for impact assessment study we have to ensure that things are in place and keeping your end result uh, in mind we plan out our uh, activities and an outcome so we are responsible for the impact to happen and uh, we do share it uh, as committed to the donor so it is important for an organization to keep a track of things so that whenever they come to us or whenever the donor inquires with us we need to be we need to facilitate the process during uh, uh, covid times it is only through uh, sharing it through email and uh, digital conversations happen otherwise uh, all these things happen uh, through physical visits there is a prior intimation and uh, they would uh, require all these details uh, shared to them prior to their visit they would understand it right? and then they would come and then ensure it and they would also do it independently too without our involvement too will it help if you have a tech based tool to measure or monitor the impact and to communicate with all the stakeholders uh, there are uh, not i mean to the best of my knowledge uh, not very many uh, uh, tech tools available uh, i mean now it is through spreadsheets uh, excel sheets and other thing but there is no single dashboard where uh, a donor and donee and uh, beneficiaries data is available and then uh, you get the information uh, at one shot so there is a need people would always like to meet people human interaction is always good specifically the development uh, work demands a different scenario altogether it's not always possible when you are working with farmers or persons with disabilities in villages so there could be some challenges but it's a way forward i think uh, it can address a lot of things in what ways did the covid situation impact your ngo ashray akuti the case is slightly different uh, we were able to provide um, online support to children uh, online education because we have always uh, made best use of technology timely we have got into covid relief services by providing uh, groceries to children families uh, we have gone out and then distributed groceries um, to say about 12000 families i mean respect of our children's families and then uh, we are doing uh, healthcare services providing oxygen cons- oxygen concentrates home isolation kits and uh, providing financial assistance to the bread earner or income earner of the family who have, uh, who is lost um, so such work uh, is keeping us engaged but not all the organizations are not able to you know diversify and attract support and carry out services so uh, things are going better uh, with our shrekti but we are finding a lot of challenges people are not able to come to work and we are also not able to retain all the people mm-hmm. so there is a uh, i mean uh, there is an issue uh, funding issue happening because covid relief services is able to attract support but whereas our uh, other projects are not able to attract support at this point of time corporates they have uh, routed all their support to covid be it the trust or individuals so most of them are interested to give towards covid relief that's true sir hoping for better times to come thank you so much for your time and for joining us today yeah thank you very much uh, uh, tavishi and uh, wish you all the best and uh, wish you a great success to josh community i think you are having a, a fantastic plans for the development sector um, it's going to benefit um, uh, the community